Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. I'm here today with a completed little project. It's a little junk journal folio with a notebook, so there's plenty of space for journaling, plenty of decoration. And the folio itself is made from one sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock or design paper. I'll give you a quick look at it now and you'll get to see more of it as we go through and recreate this. So it's got a seam bind enclosure. Again, you use what you want if you're going to make this. I had seam binding, so I used it. If you've got sari silk, use that. Use ribbon, use whatever you like. I've wrapped it around three times, so I've used about a metre there. And on it, I've just popped a little silver bird charm. It just reminded me of the little birdies on <laughs> the paper. And I've just attached that with a bulb clip. These beads that you can see dangling out at bottom there on the notebook that's inside. So on the front we've got a pocket. I've made that from a frame that came in an ephemera pack. This is the Rose Parfum, Parfum, I don't even know how to say it, collection by Stamperia. So we've got that pocket, so I've put a little journal card in the front. The pocket I've then put acetate behind the frame. We've got a few little elements from the ephemera pack decorating it. Again, you do that if you want to, or you can just make this as a plain, simple folio. We open it up, we've got various flips, flaps, bits tucked everywhere. We've got a pocket there. I might forget some pockets here. Oh, that's a little policy pocket. I've not popped anything in there yet, but I will. Made that quite simply. No bra no tools needed for that, really. I've used brads. As long as you've got an old punch, you can do that. Got a little pocket there where I've put a journal card. That centre part has a pocket. We turn it over, we've got a belly band, little envelope in. I'll show you that later. And then here we've got the little notebook. I've just put some yummy papers in. These are all papers that I had. I've got a stash of these actually. I've had them years. We've got pearlescent papers, we've got vellums, we've got other pastel papers. I think I just chose six, folded them over, sewed them into a little notebook. As you can see, that comes out. I've used the back page to slip it into a pocket there. So you can take that out if you should want to. That opens up again. We've got another pocket here. I've just cut around some of the flowers from one of the papers papers to make that journal card in it a little vellum pocket here again that was there that just comes out i've just glued there at a couple of ends we've got another pocket on the top i've not counted the pockets on this i'll have to count them won't i so well that can flip there that can flip there <laughs> just flip it flap it flop it how you want it to so crack on and i'll show you how i made it so I'll zoom out a little bit and I'll be back with you to show you how we're going to score, cut and fold the 12 by 12 paper. And I'm back. So I've got the paper I'm going to use. I'm going to use some from this Rose Parfum collection again. I've chosen a few sheets. I've got the, uh, yeah, the regular pad, the regular, and I've also got this backgrounds pad. This would be easier for a beginner who wasn't sure about using papers that had a, a definite direction like this one yeah i'll get the big papers out and show you what i mean yeah that's got a definite direction that's what we call a directional paper then i have one here there is no definite direction to that that's what we call a non-directional paper yeah you, you won't really know yet whether that were upside down sideways or whatever so if you're unsure use a paper like that I'm going to use this one, I think. I like this one. That side is rather non-directional, but then on the other side, some of these, it is directional. So, yeah, a bit of, bit of both worlds there, aren't we? So, yeah, I really like that one. So, I'm going to use that one. So, I'll put these to one side. There's ways round everything. So, if you get a piece that's... I did it on mine. Look at this again. The back was... The paper was completely upside down so i stuck another piece on the correct way up and that is what gave me then my pocket here yeah so yeah there's always something you can do if you've got paper you don't like cover it up cover it up 
So this is the one I'm going to use. Grab your scoreboard, woman. There we go. I've got my scoring tool. Now the first score we need to make is six inches horizontally across the paper. So I'm going to turn that round and score at six. There we have it. Then I'm going to put it back the correct way and I'm going to score at four inches and eight and a half inches. So four and eight and a half. Oh, I've had a few people ask about my new scoring tool. <laughs> I've broke quite a few plastic ones on camera. I've had this since Christmas now and I'm liking it. It's metal. The end. Is that the right end? Yeah, the, oh, that's not where it screws off, woman. That's where it screws off. It screws off there and inside you've got a variety of sizes. Yeah. So, ooh. <laughs> they're everywhere now. They're everywhere. So I've put my two favourite sizes in and that's what I use. So this should help uh, combat my heavy handedness. So yeah, I broke a couple of plastic ones just by pressing far too hard. I just don't know my own strength. So yeah, I did digress a little bit there. But we've just got at four and eight and a half. So yeah, pop that back on the floor. I will put a link in the description for this too. We'll... Right, next we're going to need the scissors. So chop chop i've got my big timmy scissors we just need to make one cut and we need to cut from that crease there all the way to that end so i will cut it i'm just going straight down middle if we need to do a little bit trimming off later we will i'm getting really good at cutting straight lines this is gonna be one kiss line i've ever cut now i've said that in it and i like to do the last bit with my smaller scissors because I find it hard to stop on the crease with big ones. So, chomp. There we go. Right, now we're going to do some folding. Right, before even thinking about what way around we want this, I'm going to come in, I'm just going to fold that over. Yeah, these, oh, I've got a bit of glue on the edge of that. That's the only annoying thing sometimes about these stamp area papers. There's nothing else annoying, they're just so gorgeous. And like I say, you don't have to use stamp here. You use what you've got. I think this would look fabulous in Timmy papers. Tim Holtz, that is. So I'm going to line those two corners up to do my folding. Then I'm going to come in and make sure they're lined up. Then I'm going to grab my bone folder. And just I'm not going to go mad. Just a little crease. There we go. Now I'm going to fold that over like that. And I'm keeping an eye on this bottom all the time I'm keeping my bottom lined up yeah, we need a nicely lined up bottom a little crease then I'm folding that over again again lining keeping my bottom all lined up and I'm going to turn it over I'm going to fold that in this is still my bottom. The one with no folds is my what I'm calling my bottom. Then I'm going to fold that in. Now this time, the last one, I want those edges to line up. That bottom to line up and this edge. So you might need to just manipulate it a bit before you crease this. Can you see? Just to keep it all lined up. If you don't do this before doing your bone folding, it might just not quite line up as nicely as you want. And this, on this part of it, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Might be a junk journal, but I don't want to look like a piece of junk. <laughs> it needs to be a pretty piece of junk. Right, so now let's look at what we've got. So I've got that, I've got that there. Those roses are obviously upside down. I've got that there, which is going to be my pocket when I've done a bit of gluing. I've got that there. Everything looks upside down apart from that Le Jardin. Mm. So um, I don't think that's thrilling me. So I'm going to do that. I've turned it over completely and I'm going to have another look at it. Open it, liking. That's upside down. But do you know what? I can do something about that. I can cover it up. Yeah, I'm going to cover that up. We're going to have a pocket there. If you look at my original one. Yeah, I put 
that pocket there and that pocket there so you won't see that so that's not bothering me at the minute I'm all happy about that that looks good that looks good turn it over that looks much better that way that looks good that looks good I think this is going to be the way I'm going to have it and that's ooh, that's the back this time and I don't need to cover that up and make a pocket so yeah I'm pretty happy with that that is the way I'm going to have it I'll let you into a little secret with this one <laughs> I did it upside down to what I initially intended to do it and I still made it look good right so we've done the folding you do your folding make sure you're happy if you're not happy with either of those two you can always take it apart completely and fold it that way yeah so that you mainly see the opposite sides does that make sense yeah, I hope it does. But I've, I've found a way I'm happy with. So I'm going to come in and do some gluing now. Right, I'm just going to zoom back in now. We've not got a full 12 by 12 on the screen. And then we'll crack on. And we're here. So, I've got my glue next. This is Art Glitter Glue. I'll show you what this looks like in a big bottle. I get the really big bottle. Yeah, and I decant into this one. You can get smaller bottles. This is a 16 ounce. I think they do a four ounce and eight ounce. They might even do a two ounce. But I'm still very heavy handed with bottles that size. So I buy these teeny tiny ones and I decant from this big one. So I've had a lot of questions about that. what glue I use lately. Yeah, it is. It can be expensive. That bottle cost me about £25, but I've been using it over a year and it's not even halfway down yet. Right, so if you want to go ahead and ink at this point, ink before you glue. I prefer to glue before I ink. Now, we're going to need to glue in two places. Glue along there and down there because we're sealing these two pieces up to make that interior pocket that we've got there. Yeah, that's the pocket that we're making now by gluing. So I'll do glue on here as long as we've got the edge sealed and next to the crease. So come in. If you prefer using tape for this, use tape. If you want to use ordinary um, PVA glue, use that. I like art glitter. It dries a bit quicker and it wrinkles your paper less. If you're using a thick cardstock though, you don't really need to use this. And if I weren't on camera, I'd just use my regular PVA tacky glue. Right, so when you seal this up, make sure you've got those corners together. If you don't get this bit right, it's going to go wrong. Well, it's not going to go wrong. It's not all going to fold nicely. Right, so I'm going to fold that over. Fold that over. And I'm just making sure these are nicely glued. So that's our middle pocket. So that is now our front flap, our back flap, our middle pocket, the front of the folio and the back of the folio. So if you want to decorate it completely different to me, once you get to this point, you can go off on your own little journey, your own little wander, decorate it however you want. I'm going to decorate mine pretty similar to this one, just to show you how I got that effect. So while that glues, I'm going to rifle. I'm going to rifle my ephemera. I want to do another frame pocket like I did there. I'm not really liking that frame for it. I'll show you the ephemera packs I've used. The, I can't find these on Amazon to link. I, I've put the link of the craft shop in the UK where these came from, which is Charmed Cards and Crafts. Uh, if you just Google it, you will find it in your country. If it's available in your country, Google it. It's the Stamperia Rose Parfum. And they do these two ephemera packs. I don't know if they have different names. No, they have code numbers. But they're just called exactly the same. And I've gone and mixed them up now anyway. So I don't know what came out of what. Oh, here we go. Here's my other frames. Came out of the pack. But if you've got dies, make yourself a frame with dies. Make yourself a frame. We did some... We did an M scrap busters where we cut uh, squares out of the front of uh, something to make an acetate pocket. Make yourself a frame like that if you want that look and you don't have dies or the ephemera. Right, that one. 
Oh, that one, the colour looks really good. I'm going to do that. Yeah, it's not going to be a full pocket like that one, but I like the look. I like the colour. It goes nice. That's lucky that, because I, I didn't have many frames, did I? You could put a frame in the middle. What does Timmy always say? You do you. Tim Holtz, that is. I always call him Timmy. Timmy third, when he's been naughty. All right, so yeah, that's going to be there. Ooh, yeah. So, grab my ink. I'm use, I'll show you what I'm using. I'm using walnut stain. I like the Distress Oxide. I like the colour of it. And I'm just going to ink that little bit up. We'll do this while the glue dries properly on that, you see. I'm going to ink a little bit around the edge. This is going to be a pretty easy frame to put acetate behind because we've got nice wide borders. That one were a bit trickier because look how thin that were. But I did it. I did it. Right, the acetate I use, I use the overhead projector transparency film. Uh, again, that's always, everything I use is always linked and listed in my description. I do sometimes forget, so give me a nudge in comments and I'll link it. But if you can find it in the description, that will help me because I haven't then got to go and find it again. Right, I'm grabbing, oh, this is not glaring too much, I do have a light on. I'm going to cut this acetate down widthways. I'm not giving you measurements for this because yours might measure different. It really mine. These are some of my scraps. Yeah, that's looking good. I'm just going to cut them corners off because my frame's a bit rounded. On the corners. That will look good. And then I'm going to cut the length down. About yay. Looking good. There's now acetate everywhere. I'll put those big pieces back in. Yeah, I bought a pack of hundred of these. I'm go they're going to be lasting me forever. There we go. Get rid of the scraps. Put them on the big bin on the floor. And on this one, I'm not going to glue the acetate because that's such a wonky. Yeah, I'm just going to put my glue about midway. Then I'm sure, when I'm doing regular shapes, I tend to put the glue on the acetate. <laughs> That's less chance of me losing it. Oh, see, I can't, how's that? Is that going right? You've got to really drop this where you want it. You can't, I ain't got too much wiggly room with acetate because you wiggle the glue. And you, we don't want to wiggle it in front of that window. Although if you do, again, there's always a workaround. Stick an embellishment over it. But we do want to avoid problems, don't we? There are always solutions to problems. But if we don't have the problems in the first place, all well and good. So that's that. I like that. I've got fingerprints on it, but I'll wipe them off Sorry, another time. Sorry, I'm not sure. You just always, always when I'm crafting Gert, always. Gertrude is my... A-L-E-X-A -E device. Right, that's that. Now, before I do glue that on, I'm going to come in and I'm going to ink every edge on this. Now, that might be a little bit boring for you to watch. And when I say every edge, I mean every edge. So I'm going to pause while I do that. I'll also take that opportunity to fill my cup of tea up. And I will be back with you in a flash. And I'm back again. So every edge is inked. I'm just going to show you something. I did say earlier on when you were cutting along that one cut you needed to make, if you needed to adjust it later, you can. I mean, th this is finicky, but can you see there how that bit is higher than that bit? So I'm just going to come in and trim it. I didn't want to do it without showing you I'd done it. It's just it's one of my bugbears that doing things off camera that need doing. If it needs doing, I need to show it. All right, so that's it. I'm happier with that now. So I'll just go in and, oops, my punches are just rolling around, having fun. <laughs> that's all. So that's it. It was a very minor thing, but it would have bugged me. And I know I've got people out there it would have bugged. I know I've got quite a few new subscribers 
because I've had a few comment that they are new to junk journaling, but I've come to it the same way I did from card making or mini album making. And it is a struggle. It's a struggle not wanting everything to be really perfect. I manage it a lot at time. Things like this. I just can't let it go. That's got to be, it's got to be trimmed. It's got to be. I know that won't bother some, but it bothers me. I'm happy now. <laughs> and that's the aim of the game. Right, so that's all inked. Every edge is inked. I've even bent it back a little bit and inked down those creases because that makes me happy. And the acetate has now dried. Well, it's not perfectly dried. It takes a good while to completely dry, but it's dried enough for me to start doing things with it. So I'm just, <laughs> just going to get a little clean up backside with bottom of my jumper. There you go. <laughs> Sorted. So now I'm going to glue that on. So same glue again i'm going to go down the edges because i've not had to put the acetate right to edge i'm just glue onto the card so that'll that'll hold even quicker i don't know whether this i don't know which way fleur de lis go me i think it's that way yeah so i'm gonna call that my top and that my bottom i'm not good with that kind of thing i'm a bit kind of person who if i had that on a wallpaper i'd stick it on upside down it's a good job i don't wallpaper anymore isn't it Convince myself to love the painted wall look. I think I've lived in private rented properties for so many years, and that's what you get plain white or cream walls. And I've just learned to love them. You can change all the rest of your deco a lot easier and quicker if you've got plain cream painted walls. Right, so that's on. I like that. Like I said, different to my original one. The light just spun round on uh, my Gertrude device. I don't know if she's about to share some pearls of wisdom with us. No, mm -hmm. no. She just made a doo-doo noise. I think I uh, put her off then. She was going to, I think. I think she was going to sesame and then because she knew I were onto her, she was like, do. Yeah, that's a do I'll shut up noise, I think. Right, I do that, I do this a lot. Rather than squidging down once and having all the glue squirt out, I like to gently just keep pressing. It's one of the times when I'm not heavy handed. And then I'll rabbit to you while I'm doing it. So I'm sure some of you are thinking, what on earth is that woman doing stroking that? No, I'm not. I'm still pressing it down. So that's that. Right, if you are using this Rose Perfume collection, these journal cards that come in the collection are the perfect size. I'm not sure whether it's going to be perfect size here, though. I might have to make my own now because that's a very narrow frame. That one worked perfect size for that. But I'm going to have to make one. Let's get some scraps of card and paper out. I've got one scrap here ready. Mm, might be a bit narrow. Mm, I don't know. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. Let's open it up and do some more bits and bobs. Right. I'll get the original one in front of me. So, if we open that up, on this flap here, I used one of those... I used some of the uh, ephemera. I glued them together. I glued a pot and three flowers together and then I've just tucked a little tag in behind. If we open it up again, I've put one of the slots die pockets from Tim Holtz. If I take all these out, if you've never seen it, you'll see what it looks like. That is a die that I've used. Yeah, and then I've just tucked all that ephemera in it looks very different once you've got your ephemera in i love that slot die i need to use it more because it's yummy and then i've just put loads of cutter parts from the yeah paper pad in it now here i've got a vellum pocket i've used this scrap vellum it is scrap vellum don't ask me where i got it from because the place doesn't exist anymore I bought it from a warehouse and I've got this big bag full of scrap vellum. Yeah, and I've just chosen this white one. You use what you've got. You don't even have to use vellum there. I've been watching a lady called um, Pink Strawberries and she uses loads of vellum in her projects. And I thought, oh, let's give vellum a whirl. To be honest, I started following a tutorial of hers when she made something very similar to this and it went wrong. So then I ended up coming up with this which looks nothing like what she did. <laughs> You'd never know if I'd not said. I nearly forgot to mention that. So I'm going to do a pocket there again, which is that piece. It will then cover up 
this upside down piece and I'm going to do another pocket on the corresponding scor page, the corresponding page there I think. Yeah, I still want to do those pockets. So I'm just going to grab my trimmer and I'm going to cut this down. It measures nearly six inches so I'm going to do two two and three quarter inch pockets. Well, I'll waste a smidgen, but I want my pockets to be the same height, and I can't do maths at the minute. Then I'm going to cut them down so that they fit just inside my crease lines. I'll grab a little pencil mark for that. Grab a pencil to make a mark, should I say. And then I'm cut, going to cut them both down to that size. I'll tell you what the size is when I've done. I don't honestly know the size of the one I've already made because I did not measure it. I don't I don't often work by knowing my measurements. I think it's much better to know how you make the pocket fit rather than cut one to a size and then have, have it not fit, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Here we go, I've got the little non-glare ruler. So that happened to be... Where does that ruler start? I don't know. It's three and hmm, three and seven eighths. That happens to be. So that's it. Yeah, that's is that four wide? I don't know how wide that is. How wide is that? Is that four and a half? Get your measure. Get this ruler out, woman. It measures better. Four. That's just four and a half. So yeah, that's four and seven eighths. Yeah. Right, and then I'm just inking around the edge. I did put the first one on just white and I didn't like that stark white look. So I had to come in and do a bit of inking. You do you. It depends what paper you're using. It might not suit all this ink or it might suit all this ink. Oh, craft a lunch. Just a mini one. Nothing to get your knickers in a twist about. So that's my edges inked a little bit and then just to make them a little bit more grungy looking I've just come in and gone over them with my inking tool. Oh I watched an absolutely fabulous video today. I'm very behind in catching it with the videos that people are doing as part of Rachel and Bella's collaboration, the junk journal tips, tricks and hacks but I watched one by Shinooki Art that girl is amazing what she can do with one ink pad absolutely amazing i'm very too much mess of earth when it comes to using water and ink together i've got a small desk and i don't want to splatter ink on everything but she's made me want to have a go so there can you see it's just a little bit grungier and i am going to do something and this is what i've seen I've, can i never remember the lady's name at pink strawberries to me she's just a strawberry <laughs> that's that's a name it's not uh, and I'm going to put glue just onto the vellum. I think we're always very afraid of putting glue on vellum because you can see it. But the way she does it, you just don't see it. She gives it a smush. Oh, my glue's getting blocked up. You don't want that halfway through gluing a piece of vellum, woman. It's going to dry and cause you problems. No, I do have more for vellum if I muck it up. Put some more there because it's starting to dry up. Other thing is, vellum likes to curl when you put glue on it, which is very annoying. But she puts it on and smushes it. Smush. Smushes it straight away. And spreads it all out. She's not worried if it makes her pocket a little bit smaller, as long as it looks good. There we go, smush, smush. And I did find once it started to dry, the edges wanted to curl again. So before the glue's completely dry, come in and get another smush. Right, so let's glue this one on. Can you see how <laughs> this little bottle means I don't use too much of the art glitter glue? Oh, I'm going to have to put its pin in just to get a little clean out. Come on, you can do it. Mine gets clogged a lot because I don't put my pin in. And then I leave my glue sat there and it clogs up really quickly. There we go, I'm very frugal with this glue. 
you don't need a lot and give it a good smush don't be scared of it coming out of edges you can always wipe it off smush smush that's the new sound of the day smush smush Now you can see that one a bit. I promise you that will go away as it dries. It just does. I think if you might, if you were using something completely and utterly see-through, a very thin, pale coloured vellum, you might have more problem. I don't know. Right, so that's my two vellumy pockets. What's the next thing? That is already a pocket. Ah. Let's make that. Let's make that little six by six pocket policy little pocket. Right, I need a six by six piece of paper. I think that is still six inches wide, so I may be able to come in and cut that down. Yep, that's six inches. So I'm going to cut that in half and use half of this. I'll cut that there. Yeah, I used part of that to make that one, I think. Oh, that's not six inches, you silly woman, is it? Why have I just done that? That weren't six inches. If I had a brain, I'd be lethal. That's six inches. That one, my brain and my hands having a disconnect. Right, I'm going to get my scoreboard for this. I'm going to use my little one because it's easy to go on desk. And for this, it's very simple, this. Very simple, she says. Now, I'm going to score this at two and seven eighths, which is just there. And I'm going to score it again a quarter from the end, which is five and three quarters, yeah five and three quarters and I'm going to turn it around and at the top I'm going to score it an inch and a half I'll do this an inch and a half from that edge and I'm going to score it half an inch from that edge so I hope you followed that the first score line is two and seven eighths then we score it again at five and six or five and three quarters then we turn it we score three quarters of an inch from the top and half an inch from the bottom so that's half an inch and five and a quarter inches so you can make this with any six by six paper you've got then we need to come in and do a bit of cutting right cut 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 here we go right you see this little piece here that needs to go we don't want that so I'm going to cut that little corner off altogether I'm not cutting it at an angle I'm just cutting it straight now this piece here that needs to go so again I'm going to cut that off so what we're going to be left with then is an envelope ready to fold up yeah so we're basically we're cutting off all the four corners so we're cutting that off they might all be different sizes but there's still the pieces in the four corners they need to go bye bye we don't want them and then i'm gonna cut that one so they're all gone now So then we fold it along all the creases. You can vary the measurements for this. You can score, you can leave a bigger flap at the top, at the bottom, but this is the size I like. Fold that over. So you can see now this is an envelope. That is the top flap that comes down. That is the bottom flap that comes up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure I've cut these nice and flush. That's a little bit wonky. Whenever you score paper, something's got to happen to that little bit. 
that little bit of paper that you depress will make you score. I'm going to tidy that one up a little bit. Then I'm going to come in with my corner rounder, which is hanging about on my desk somewhere. Corner rounder, where are you? I'm very good at losing this. There it were, right under my nose, right under my nose. Could not have been closer. And I'm just going to use my small size corner rounder on this and round those four corners. There we go. And I'm going to do, I'll do my inking so I don't forget. Just going to ink, oh, I'm going to put a circle notch in there. There we go. I just like that. You don't have to do that bit. Whenever you're watching tutorials, there's lots of things. There's things you have to do and then there's things you could do. A circle notch punch out is a could do. It's not going to make any difference to how this envelope opens. I just like the look. And it might be a little bit easy to get stuff in and out. I'm not really sure. There we go. I like to ink this before I glue because there's edges like that one that you need to get into. I'm going to ink that flap. If you want to make this a loose envelope to tuck in, ink the back. I'm not, so I'm not going to bother inking it back. It's waste ink. Waste ink. We don't like waste, do we, Deirdre? No, we don't, Julie. Absolutely no idea who Deirdre is. Apart from she featured on a coffee advert a lot of years ago. Right. <clears throat> I hope I didn't go through that too quick for you. But that really is how quick making one of those is. Right, can you see as I've just folded that up now? Ooh. So what I'm going to do to combat that. Ooh, I'm just going to take a sliver off there. And that... There you go, that's much better. So before I glue it, I'm going to make my little button string closure bitty bobbies. I've used my little around about half inch punch for this. It doesn't have size on, very weird, very weird. And I'm going to grab some scraps to do it from. I think I'm going to use that strip there. Oh no, I'm going to need that later. Can you see? I need that for that belly band if I'm going to do one same. So grab a different scrap woman, you've got plenty to go at. Use that. I'm going to use this. That's where I cut my pocket out last time. I think I like that colour, so I'm going to use this top bit. One, two. And I'm going to pop some holes in. You don't even need to use your hole punch for this, so I'm not even going to. I'm going to grab my piece of handy dandy foam and my pokey tool. And I'm just going to stab my hole like that with my pokey tool. Yeah. Shouldn't be mentioning stabbing really. Where's the pokey tool? It's in here somewhere. Oh, there's two there, look. I've got so many pokey tools, I forget what they look like. So I'm just going to come in, I'm going to put both together. And I'm going to make a hole. Once it's gone through, I'm just going to do that to make me all a bit bigger. Now they are big enough, those holes, for me to stick a brad through. Oh, don't put your foam away, woman. You've got to punch holes in your envelope yet. So I'm going to bring my envelope back now. And I want to punch a hole. I'll mark this with a pencil where I want to punch them. Now on my first one, I got these a little bit too close together, so I'm just going to spread them out a little bit this time. So that's one pencil hole. That's my other pencil hole. And I'm just going to come in again and stab through with my pokey tool. Was that the pencil hole? I think so. I like that bit there to make the hole bigger. I really do. That bit pleases me. Now, the brads I've used last time, I'm going to use again. I've got some of these little brads with pearl heads. Again, don't have to use them. Use what you like. But I like these. I'm just going to grab a few so I can see colour. 
I think I might just use the white ones on this because that's what I seem to have grabbed out. I never seem to use white, I always go for coloured ones. Let's use a white one. So, oh, ink your edges first. Ink your edges. I forget to ink sometimes. But again, you can always come in later and do it. Whee. So I'll pop that one on there. I know I'm going at a faster pace today because we've got a lot to get through. So if I'm going too fast for you, just pause me. Put me on a slower speed so I'm jogging like that. <laughs> oh yeah, just pause, just turn me off. <laughs> oh dear. I watch a lot of my YouTube sped up. So I haven't got time to watch as many videos as I want to watch. So just watch it sped up. So I quite often miss what they're saying, and that's the way I make mistakes as well, I think. So, that's my two little... I love that, that's so cute. And then I'm going to come in and glue it. So I'm going to put glue along that little flap. I've not made one of these for ages. Thank you, Pink Strawberries, for reminding me these existed. Yeah, I will put her channel link in as well. Go check her out, she does some fabulous stuff. Fabulous. We have different styles. She doesn't do the inking like I do the inking. She uses bright, modern. Yeah, she's really good. I like her. Whee. Right, it just shows that you can, it doesn't matter if you're doing something in a different style or a different paper. You can still use the techniques. So that's that. I like that. I think I like that better than my first one. Now, for my closure, I'm using some of my wax linen thread. I've used my cream one because that's the one I bound my little uh, journal with. So I just flap it around once. And there you go. And then I cut it off. It's not a big every policy envelope that needs to hold a lot of stuff. So I'm not going mad with string. Right, get my thing out now. And then, yeah, I'm going to put it in the same place because I can. That is going to go there. It's much more pastel, this one, isn't it? I really like it. Did I make that same height? I did. No, I made it a little bit taller. Don't matter. And I'm going to glue this on on three edges so we've got another tuck there. So I'm going to glue the top. Oh, this blinking glue. I've not put my pen in again. I need a little recorded message that goes off about every five minutes. Put your glue in your pen. Put your glue in your pen. Put your pen in your glue. What would my mum used to say to me when I was younger? What would you, I wonder what you'd say if you could talk. Because <laughs> I've always mixed my words up like that. Hey. I always find it worse when I've got a migraine coming on as well. I talk absolute tosh. Absolute. And I don't realise at time. Later on when colours start <laughs> swirling across my eyes and everything goes sparkly. I'm like, oh yeah, got migraine. I take tablets to prevent mine and it really it prevents the banging headache and the being really ill but I still get the uh, talking rubbish and the swirly visual disturbances so, but they come on and I don't realise because <laughs> I've not had any other warnings Whee. right oh I like that I do I like it so as you can see it's starting to come together right what else do I need to show you because I'm not going to decorate the whole thing because that would take forever. Right. We've done the policy envelope. The belly band. Right, my belly band, what I used is a piece of the scrapbook paper that I'd just trimmed off the edge. And then behind it, I've used a piece of punched paper. So I'm going to do the same belly band there. And I've used this punch. Let me show it you. But you don't need the same punch. Any punch will do. It's just a fancy edge punch, yeah? You don't even need a fancy edge punch. You could just put any other 
piece of scrapbook I'm trying to pick that one up behind it just to layer it up anything you want so let's shall I use that no oh, I think I might use that that's going to be the perfect size yeah and it's a very small edge so I'm going to cut this down to whatever width I've got I'm not saying a size, I'll tell you how wide it is when I've cut it. It's just over one and a half inches. A bit more. You see, I just, I've just gone to there. So I've got a piece that's just over one and a half inches. And I'm going to punch my edges and then I'm going to layer that on. Now, if you've never had one of these edge punches, I didn't used to be able to do it. So start at that edge and punch. I have to do it upside down otherwise I can't see how to layer it up. Then we're going to move it along and you line these up with them. You see that's the pattern we're going to use. You can see when you've got it lined up. Then we punch again. This is a Martha Stewart one. I do tend to favour the Martha Stewart and EK Success ones. I've had other brands and I don't find them as easy to use. I find it much more difficult to line things up. I've tried Tonic, sorry Tonic, not a fan. I do have a couple of X cut ones there, not too bad. I think that's a UK brand. Then we're going to move it along to that side. And we'll start lining up this side. I forget to use my edge punches. And that's that, that's that one done. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. Right, I'm going to start at that end. So that's the end I started at there. Can you see? So I'm going to start at that end. Then I get my little scallops directly opposite each other. Liney, liney. Once you get used to these, yeah, they can go pretty quick with them. I had a bit of practice already yesterday. And there we go. So I've got my little scallop bit. I'm not sure now if that's going to be wide enough. Lordy, lordy. That's going to cover all my scallops up. So do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut that down. I don't want to do another scallop. We'll just have a narrower belly band. I forgot about all this stuff. It cuts off edge. Ends up cutting that off, doesn't it? Silly woman. So I'm just going to come in and trim this a little bit. Now, when I want to get an even edge on both sides, I line my pattern up with this plastic edge. So I'm going to line that up so I can just see a sliver of that black and can you see now that's nice and even and I'm going to do the exact same thing on that side so I can see the same sliver of black just a sliver and chop so now I'm happy that that's even enough and hopefully that's going to fit Oh yeah, I can live with that. Don't see as many of the little holes, but yeah, I can live with that. That'll do me good. I'll do a little bit more inking. We've done an awful lot of inking today, haven't we? But I like this inked. On that belly band, it did not look, it just doesn't look as good before you ink it, does it? It just doesn't look as good. That ink gives that bit of a definition to edge. I think it makes things look a little bit more dimensional bit more 3d I just like it and a bit more vintage I bet that's what they did back in Victorian times they put ink on edge or everything to make it look old <laughs> please don't take that comment seriously and tell me it's due to age please don't no but no I don't have any subscribers who would do that I think yeah that's just my sense of humor did I do edge of that? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's different, but I like it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to 
glue the back of here. Now this is definitely a job where I could have gone away, got away with using PVA glue instead of my art glitter. But it's going to dry nice and quick on camera. And I'm going to eyeball this. Wonky at bottom. Got a wonky bottom, love. Just a bit of squidgy, squidgy wiggle, squidgy wiggle room. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So that is going to go on there. And because everything's six inches, it just fits lovely, nearly. It's going to need a bit of a trim when I've glued it. Whee. That's down to the teeny bit we lost when we folded that. Because that crease does take up. I would say that crease is about an, a sixteenth of an inch of your paper. It's disappeared into crease. Don't even go there with the things disappearing into crease. I didn't say that. And again, we're eyeballing this. That looks good to me. And I'm just going to come in and do a teeny trim across the top. Don't cut your crease. If I'd have thought on, I would have put the overhang at the bottom so I were cutting at the bottom where I haven't got that folded over crease. Then that would have eliminated the risk of mucking up my crease. So that's going to be a belly band. Right, this last page, so that I can fit my booklet in, I had to come in and make another pocket. My initial idea was I was going to glue that down and put the book in. But because that was upside down, I didn't like it. So my friend Cheryl, oh, I rabbit in two while I were doing some of this, said, put another piece of paper on to make another pocket. I'm like, why didn't I think of that, Shirley Whirly? Because I'd already done it on back. So I'm going to grab another piece. Ooh. Mm, I don't know. I don't think I like that. You're going to have to bite bullet and chomp into a bigger piece of paper, aren't you, woman? Oh. I really don't like that. So I'm just going to pause, tidy my desk up a bit and come back with some more bits of paper for this last bit. And I'm back. A little bit more organised now. I've got the papers I want to use for my other pockets. I've gone ahead and I've cut out. That's the die. It's the, I want to show you the packet. It's this one. It's the Thinlets die. And it's, I don't even know if it has a name. We call it Slots Pocket. Maybe Timmy called it that. I don't know. Yeah, that's the one. It comes with another little die that you can make that plate with. Although I don't often. I choose my papers with a nice bit of paper there. I like that daisy. So I don't want to put the plate on. But that is the die, if anyone wants to see it. It's only about £7 in UK, which I think is well worth it for the amount of use you can get from it. So that's then going to go there. But I did say so first we're going to make this extra pocket, which is this one here, to put the book in. So I've grabbed the papers that I want to use. This was our, this were a prototype I scored incorrectly. Well, not incorrectly. I didn't score it as I wanted it to be. I could have made something out of it, but I'm going to use these papers to make pockets. Right, I think I want to use that piece there. I like those roses. It is six inches high. So I want to make the pocket about yay size. Couldn't tell you what yay size is, because like I say, it's not one of them things I really measure. It's you know, three and an eighth of an inch, about, and it's six inches high. So I'm going to come in and cut that. I didn't want to cut this without you. Again, I got a lot of positive feedback from people who say they like to know how I work out how to do things. And that's it. Three and, what were it? Three and an eighth? So three and a quarter? I'm going to do three and a quarter, see what occurs. <laughs> Could be wrong. Ah, that's okay. And I'm just going to take a sliver off it because this is a smidgen over six inches. So that's going to be my pocket there. Another pocket I'm going to make is the one to go on the back. So again, I'm going to use this piece of card. Yeah, it's definitely six inches high and I know it's four, is it four and a half inches? I'm saying I know it's four and a half inches wide and I've forgot. Pretty little black ruler woman. It is for, do you know, I don't know where, I don't know where it start is on that ruler. It's very weird. 
Very weird indeed. Use that one. Use it right way up, you'll get a better measurement. Yeah, it's four and a half inches wide. So I want to do it about an eighth of an inch under that. So six inches high and an eighth under the four and a half. I think once I've cut these creases off from where I cut that wrong it will be so I go to four and a half and then I just bring it back that's an eighth perhaps a little bit less than an eighth and I'm going to place it on and yeah that's going to be good the height is good we're good to go on that one put the bits I'm not using to one side and use those to make journal cards So firstly, I'm going to put that one on. I want it that way. I want to see all those yummy roses. And I'm going to put a thumb notch in with my circle punch. I'm using my one and three quarters, only because that's the one I picked up first. I'll use anywhere from a one to a two inch punch for the, doing these notches, depending, like I said, on what I pick up first. It's one of them things, you buy the punch that you think you're going to get the most use out of. I've been buying punches and collecting them for 20 years. And now there's still more I want. I don't think it's never ending, is it? We want everything as crafters. But as I keep saying lately, I'm now a little bit more uh, choosy about what I buy. Right, so grab your glue, woman, stick your pin in. Come on. Stick your pin in, your glue will work better, jobs are good and everyone will be happy. I don't even know whether I'm sticking this card on upside down it right way around. I just chose the direction that I thought looked good. I like the text in the background on these stamp areas because it's really hard to tell if it's right way up i think i might have put that one upside i don't know i don't, honestly don't know don't matter it's the way i want it which then makes it the correct way if you can see i did cut that perhaps a bit short or maybe i could trim that to make it look like i didn't cut it short yay there you go <laughs> so it's a workaround isn't there Did I miss that edge when I was doing my inking? I think that could have been an edge that I missed, yeah. So that is where my notebook's going to go. Now, while that dries, I'm going to... I'm not going to make the notebook from scratch because I did do it when I made this one. Let's hope I've not lost it. Notebook, where are you? Oh, don't tell me I've lost it. If I'd lost notebook now, that would really put a spanner in my works. Here we go. <laughs> Right, notebook. I'll tell you measurements. I grabbed a piece of card that measured how wide. That was eight inches by five and a half, was it? No, five and a quarter by eight. And I basically folded it in half, chomped my corners off and inked it. Now, my pages to go in, I wanted them a bit smaller. So my biggest page measures three and seven eighths wide and five inches high yeah i then just kept stuffing other pages in making each one a little bit shorter as you can see they're not all exactly the same length but that doesn't matter i didn't want perfection now i've sewn it in using a three old pamphlet stitch and i'm going to show you this i've got my pokey tool yeah when i'm doing something this small i don't go getting other tools out i don't mess too much I make sure my paper looks even-ish within that and then I'll just pop it like that I'm not using any punching cradles I'm not even bothering to get a book or anything out and I'm just going to go in the middle and punch through to the spine then I'm going to go up and do it again I'm not even measuring, I'm doing it by eye. And another one down there. Just make sure that middle one's still straight. Make sure I've not made it wonky. I've just made that wonky pulling my thing out. Hold your paper as you take your tool out, woman. 
then I'm going to punch through there. Again, I'm going to leave that in while I get my needle. I like to use, I always call it a bodkin. It's sharpish, but not too sharp. The eye's a little bit bigger than a regular needle. I have had proper book binding ones. I find them too big. I find they put holes in your paper that's far too big and everything wobbles about. I'm going to use three times the height of my book in twine because I want to leave some ends to put some beads on. Now I'm going to go in from the middle through that centre hole. I've still got my braddle, my pokey tool in the bottom hole. I'm going to pull it out so that I've got enough length here to dangle some beads. That looks good. Then I'm going to go back in through my top hole. Oh, I've missed pages. It is there. It is there, I promise you. I it's because I'm trying to do it too far away. There we go. Once I've pulled that through, I'm going to take my uh, pokey tool out at bottom hole. That just helps me keep it all together. I stick pins in sometimes. <laughs> I do all sorts. Then I'm going to go back in there. So we're missing that hole all together and going back through there to the outside of the book. Then the tricky one where we've got to go back in that middle hole where we've already got twine. So I'm just going to pull that twine down. So I'm holding it that side and that side. So I'm going to try and get my needle in there above where the twine is to get back through that hole. You might want to make that hole a bit bigger if you struggle. I've managed it. Pull that through. Then I want one piece of my twine on either side. I've done this before, loads of people do this, but you might not want to find another video if you're busy doing this project. So one either side, and I'm just going to tie this once. There we go. Take my needle off. I've got more than I needed. I'd rather have a bit more than not enough. That's the bottom of the book. So I'm going to come in with my bone folder. And just bone fold all bone fold all this just to make the book a little bit flatter. Yeah, another go on to the side. I forgot to ink that edge. So I'll just quickly ink that. Bit more ink on my tool. And that's my little notebook. You may have already got a notebook made that you can pop in. You may not need to make this. And I'm going to cut that off about the same length. I'm going to bring my folio back now because that should have dried. And this will fit perfectly in there. I could have made it a bit taller, but I didn't want it too tight. So that's my little notebook then in that folio. So there we have it. Right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this on here. You don't have to put that there. Put any pockets you want or everything apart from making the base of this. Just go for it and do what you want. I've not put my pen in again. So I'm going to glue up the edges. If I can get any glue out. Not along the top because then we can poke something down the top of this. Oh, and I've got loads of glue out then like buses don't come for ages and then when they come there's loads all at once right and that which side ah oh, that goes on the inside nearly stuck it out wrong side that's going to go on there and it's going to cover that up you know that writing that's wrong oh, i'll put that a bit higher than i did my last one but it don't matter it doesn't have to be exactly the same does it no and that's that. And that will look completely transformed when we're just sticking a load of ephemera in it. Load of ephemera. Oh, I've got a little envelope there. That looks cute. That can go in. I'm going to grab the ephemera that I cut out of the pages. Go away, Braddle. Put you away, mate. The pages in the paper collection because it's thinner. Doesn't add as much bulk. 
can just spread them all out the table now because I've nearly done. Alright, so what we've got here. Oh, I like that one. That's cute. I'm going to grab a bigger one to tuck in the back. One of the journal card size ones. What we got here? These are all inked ready. Oh, that's nice. That can go there. That just fell out, so that's going to go in, isn't it? I recognise some of these from digitals I've bought in past. These images. Oh, I like that one. A lot of the perfume labels, a lot of these. Because the theme of this uh, collection is roses and perfume. Although I've chosen a sheet that doesn't have a lot of perfume on, does it? Let's tuck you in there. So, there we have it. Now, on here, I wanted to put a little perfume bottle because you see that bit when that flap's flapped over. So I think I'm going to grab another one of those. Or I could put a rose. That's a cute little rose. I think I might put a rose on this one. No, we don't see it all. Grab, go back to plan A, get a perfume bottle. Ooh, that's big. Ooh, I like it though. Mm, yeah, I like it. It don't matter that it don't, <laughs> that don't quite fit. Because I like it. It reminds me of Blackpool Tower. Or oh, even Eiffel Tower. That one in France that were co that's a copy of the Blackpool Tower in the UK. <laughs> Don't even. France is so, yeah, famous. And I don't think anyone outside at UK is there at Blackpool Tower. Yeah, it's slightly smaller than Eiffel Tower. And it's in Blackpool on top of a building. Mm, brilliant. Loved Blackpool when I was younger. Right, so I've stuck that there. Now the other things I've stuck on here, oh, I found perfume bottle I'm going to use now, but I'm so glad I used that one instead. The other things I've stuck on here were just some little bits of ephemera again, so that I could tuck something else behind. Ooh, we need a one of those. Hmm. I might want a rose on this. I think I might do the rose and I can still tuck something in behind the rose. I can tuck a little, yeah, I can tuck a little perfume label in behind it. Well, I think that's already inked. Yeah, I must have been going to use that before. Yeah, so I'm just going to glue it there, 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 and a little bit there so I can tuck a label in the top. Don't, I don't want to leave that leaf flapping in wind. And that just looks like the rose is laid there. I like it. Put that label up a smidgen. Yeah, we can just tuck the little perfume label in there. That's nice. Right, I'm just going to tuck anything and everything in these pockets for now because I, ha I don't have any more of the large journal cards but what I will do is I'll just show you how well they fit and all go together. So if I take that one out of there, that fits in there lovely. In fact, I'm just going to pinch them rather than start chopping stuff up. So, yeah, I do have another one of these paper pads. I need to get it out and cut some ephemera because I think I want to use the same ephemera. That's cute. We've got that there. Let's put my book back in its tuck spot. What did I do? Oh, we've got to do the... Uh, we've got to glue the back pocket on. I'm going to... Can you see both of these? I'm going to take that out of there and pop it in there. So the cutter parts from the kit do fit perfectly in here, so I need to use them. But I'm not going to make you watch me cut a load of them out. And it would probably be a tea time before I'd finished. Mm, me like it. So, have we got them both? Let me stand up to see. Yeah, we've got them both in shot now. So if you can see, we've nearly got exactly the same thing. 
I think I've got one more uh, vellum pocket to decorate. Yeah. So let's get something for that. I want to use this, I think. It's very floral, this one. I like that. Yeah, I want to put that there, that little rosette. And again, if I glue it top and bottom, I can tuck something in either side. There are some round journal cards that come with this as well. I'll show you one. They're in the paper collection. If you go to a link Stamperia's site, then you can get a full flip through at paper pad if you did want one. But as I say, you don't need the same paper pad to make this project. You can make it anything you've got, but there are the round ones. Oh, I think I'm going to have that in there. So that's going to get glued a little bit top and bottom. Yeah, you've got a nice long video today. I didn't want to make it two parts. I just wanted to crack on and get it done. Get on with it, woman. <laughs> right. I'll just ink around there while that dries. Yeah, we can have a round journal card in. That's that. Now, on this page, I cut around part of the... Um, the corner of a page I don't have another page that I want to do that with so I think I'm just going to make a corner from a piece of ephemera that's ready done hmm. no I don't want to make a round pocket so let's have a look what we've got left in this box oh, we could do a smaller frame that'd be nice oh that's that's a bit busy though I think to put a frame on I don't know. What's the other frame I've got? That one. Oh, that looks so nice. Oh, it's just a smidgen. It's a smidgen too wide to put that frame on. That's quite sad. But, oh, I like it that way. Mm -mm. And then I could put another piece of ephemera behind. Oh, I've got the clock. <gasps> the clock. Sorry, frame. We've got frame up front. The clock stands out so much better on there, doesn't it? Oh yes, and if I just glue it there and the bottom, that's a perfect little tuck spot. I'd looked for places to put that clock and didn't like any places I'd considered putting it. Now, it's found its perfect place. So just bottom and side, I'm going to put glue. Then we can tuck a journal card behind it. That'd be better without that book in, woman. So, yeah, put it down onto that. Got to get that straight. Got to get that straight. It's straight-ish. Right, so that should be glued now. And I can find a piece of ephemera to pop in. I could just pop another rose in. There are some people in this kit as well. Oh, look at that. There we go. <laughs> it's got a perfume bottle in. I don't know if that's the perfect one. Mm -hmm. I never thought of just tucking it on the inside before. No, I don't like that. I don't like it. That's a daft idea. What's that? Oh, that's a little postcard. I'm liking that perfume idea. It well, needs to go that way. Yeah, it's going to have the perfume bottle in and the postcard. I like that. That just needs a journal card. I'm going to go to some of the ones that are already inked. Ooh, that's a perfume bottle. So we've finally got some perfume bottles in this little project. So that's that page, that page, that page. Let's flip that back over and put our book in. I'm not going to show you how to put beads on the bottom. That's a long, boring process. Just thread your beads on and <laughs> tie a knot. It takes me ages though because I can't see. We've decorated that. I think we've got one more decoration to do. Yes. 
that can flap there and there see you can alter how you do this yeah i just want to do the vase and the roses i've got a vase ready i'm not sure if that stands out enough so i may switch to a different vase and do we have a vase on the desk we don't so let's get the box back what other vases have we got i could put the frame on oh that's nice oh that is nice no <laughs> I just like the frames for front covers. They'll I'll make some smaller folios and use them frames. I keep teasing you at use of that frame. Oh, I think that one. Or oh, that one. I don't really know. Green. I'll never kill myself making a decision. Oh, I like that. That's like I, said, I just picked a few that that's going to be perfect so i'm going to ink those got to have that bit of ink on edge to get that little bit of definition on this project i'm deciding well it's a good job i've decided already seeing as i've made two of them into it <laughs> and i know exactly someone asked me what i do with my projects and i haven't answered you yet i have seen your comment but i haven't answered you and yeah i used to sell a lot of them uh i got very disenchanted with etsy and selling handmade a lot of my handmade stuff because the percentages they take are crazy they even take a percentage of what we charge for postage so and quite often my items cost more to post than i sold them for and you are then having to charge if I charge £10 for postage because it cost me £10, Etsy was snaffling up up to 25% of that. So I'd only get £7.50. I'd then sold the item for 10 They'd already snaffled up 25% of that. So out of my £20 sale with postage and uh, the item, I'm already down to £15. It then actually cost me £10 to send it. So I'd made a fiver. Sort of like... I started putting a lot of things in as free gifts with my items. I send them to friends. Sometimes people do buy them direct from me. If they've discovered me on YouTube, yeah, I can always invoice you through PayPal. But these two do have a home. So going forward, I'm considering just, I'll do an odd video now and again to let you know what I do have for sale and yeah contact me for buying them because like i said etsy have got far too greedy and they now have the policies are changing constantly and i'm just yeah it's really hard to make unless you're selling loads and loads of stuff and i don't sell loads of the things made with my own two little hands i'm not a fabulous digital creator i do have a few free digitals on my buy me a coffee but i am I've been learning myself how to do digitals. I bought a course <laughs> about two years ago. And if I don't do it regularly, I forget. And I have to keep starting from the beginning. So you will get a digital up there now and again. At the free, you donate if you want. But yeah, that's a lot of my stuff gets given away. And I do hoard ephemera for a long while. Then I'll have a mad uh, journaling I'll make a load of journals and that's where it all goes. That's there. Oh, I like that. That's very much like that one, isn't it? Right, I think, apart from front now, we've done. So that's that. Yeah, so all we've got to do now is find a nice card for the front and decorate the acetate corner i'm thinking rather than one big one i might put a few smaller ones in here because it's a much smaller window oh, i like that that looks good and i'm going to put a taller one over to that side that i'm going to cut from the paper that i have left over oh, it needs to say something a bit more interesting on than that doesn't it where's this one this one yeah i like that I'm going to cut the bottom down a bit and then that's going to go in. 
so I've made it five and a quarter inches high and it measures two and three quarter inches wide I think it still needs to be a little bit shorter and because the front of this paper is not as fancy as on my other one I'm going to make this a tag shape put an eyelet in and put some more seam binding on it I think so I'm going to grab mm, that's, look at that that's a teeny one grab one of these yeah this is how I get my corners even flip that over and do that more inky inky do I always ink the backs off camera, but you don't see he does get inked off camera. Yeah, that's going to bob in there. So I want to punch a hole. I'm going to use my crocodile for this. Using the big hole. Oh, did I not? I'm sure I had a message from someone. I can't remember whether I answered it about what settings I have this on. When I'm using the big hole, the big hole, I have it on three and c three c so there you go grab an eye look woman i'm gonna go for silver because i'm gonna use a silver charm i think that yeah the eyelet is slightly bigger than the hole so if you've done the same as me and bought eyelets that are bigger than your hole you can still set them with this so I'm going to go back now and I'm just going to punch again to that side and again that's a very weird shaped hole now but trust me look <laughs> it fits I'll put the little metal washer over the back and then I'm going to use C and 3 again to set it make sure everything's jiggled down where it needs to be there we go oh my little my metal one fell off so i've just said it does them perfectly and that was because i'd not got it set up right right put that in again woman try again this time keep your metal one on that's it you don't have the little it needs to be I've got that one at wrong one. It's not C and 3, it is A and 3. So A and 3, totally ignore what I said last time. Just, in fact, just ignore it. I've got that wrong as well. I've got this set up for little ones. So C3 is the little eyelets. And A and these have letters and numbers a2 are the big eyelets a2 for big eyelets that's why that didn't work crazy lady so there we go <laughs> it worked this time a2 for big c3 for little right oh i like that better now because it were much plainer paper and I think having two things in it looks nicer. And I'm just going to pop some roses on there because I think it needs them. Roses or flowers. And all we've got left to do is tie some seam binding around. Yeah, it has been a long video this, but I hope you've enjoyed it. You don't have to watch it all in one go. Ooh, we like. I think I want some leaves. Oh, yeah. I just like having something over the acetate. Yeah, I know what I'm doing now on that. So move your prototype out of where you miss this. I'm going to open that up so it's not as bulky for gluing this on. I'll leave that under. It does need to be. Right. 
So I think I'm going to glue my leaves to my rose. Like so. Yeah. And then I'll glue them all on as a little bunch of three. Oops, squidgeage. Yeah, I like that. I'm still here <laughs> with the uh, camera. Memory, we're full. All you've missed is me stick that one rose on. I'd just done that. I was just sticking that on when it stopped recording, and I've just done that. Phew, I thought, I, I'm so happy it was just that we've missed. Right, anyway, all we're left to do is put some seam binding on it. So I'm going to grab some here. Right, this, again, it's from the Scrap Cabin Shop. Oh, she's has some fabulous seam bindings. I will list her, and... You're not going to believe that this pack arrived while I was recording this video and it's got the perfect colour for this project. Ooh, I'm wanting that colour. I don't know what it is. How perfect is that? Look at all these yummy seam bindings. These were a present from my friend Pamela. Thank you so much, Pamela. I cannot thank you enough. These save me so much time. It's dusty pink. Dusty pink. How yummy. Yummy, yummy. So, yeah, Erin at Scrap Cabin. Yeah. Lovely lady. Now, I like to leave enough to tie a bow. And I like to wrap round two or three times. I've got plenty of seam binding now. I can. So, one, two. Well, I've already wrapped round one. So, I've got three layers. Then I'm going to cut it again. There we go. And then I'm going to tie it in a bow. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I need some for that. I don't know whether... To, I'm going to use the same colour. I didn't know whether to use the same colour or go for green. I think I'm going to go for the same colour. Yeah, I like the same colour. So I'm just going to cut a piece yay size. And yay size happens to be... How big's yay size? Eight inches. That doesn't look eight inches, but it is. It's because it's lovely and crinkled. And I'm just going to put two through. I'm going to put them through. Yeah, I like to put the ends through from the back. And have the loop coming over. From the back then it pulls it backwards so it's not sticking out oh that's gorgeous perfect color that what did i say the color was <laughs> i've lost band now hey dear. let me open that so you can see ellen's erin ellen i'm bad with names i always say i've got two children and i get them mixed up my scrap cabin shop and it's dusty pink oh that would make yeah, I'm going to start punching these out, Erin, and using them. I like them. My little bit, lovely little bits of ephemera. And I'm just going to pop a charm on. I think I'm going to go for a rose on this one because I've chosen a part of it that doesn't have many birds. So let's go for a rose. That's that got roses? No, that's got dragonflies and birds. Flowers. That'll be the one with roses in, woman. It says flowers on it, so move them out of the way. And let's pick ourselves a lovely rose. Oh, I like that. Oh, that's the one, isn't it? That's the one. And I'm going to grab a silver bulb clip, and then job will be indeed a good one. There we go. Yeah, I know it's been a very long video today, this, but I did not want to break it up into parts. So I will put timestamps on it so you can jump about to different bits. I think that's much better. Right, that's my rose. I'm really happy with those. So we've got that one with the pink ribbon and we've got that one with its green ribbon and its bird. 
so there we have it i'll also do a little separate video i might make it a youtube short of a little flip through yeah that might be good turn your rows right way around woman there we go so thank you very much for watching me i hope you've enjoyed that and i hope you might have learned something even if you've only learned you don't have to use paper i'm using you don't have to do everything the same i've made two folios there and i've just basically made them up as i went along the similar but different so thank you very much and i will see you next time bye